Hi there, everyone. I'm going to start like every good presentation should start with an animated GIF from Mean Girls and ask for some audience participation. So, how many of you here are members of Netflix? Good, that's what I like to see, a nice lot of you. Okay, for those of you who aren't, or if you're not, just pretend you're not for a second. Do you think, as a consumer, you should be able to browse all the TV shows and movies before signing up? Hands up if you think that's the case. Yeah, it makes sense, right? What you might not know is we did that once upon a time, but we don't actually do that now. So I'll introduce myself. I'm Anna Blaylock, and I'm on the product design team at Netflix. And this is my little dog, Monkey. I'll go back in time, four years. I just started at Netflix. I was all keen and fresh-faced. I had all these ideas about how to get new members into the service. And we're brainstorming one day with the team, and I, have this, I tell them, I've got this great idea. Why don't we let our non-members see a whole range of wonderful content before signing up? Rather than making them wait till after, I knew that customer service always got tons of calls from customers saying they wanted to know what the content was before signing up. And I figured showing the non-members our awesome UI, surely that would make them want to sign up. So, turns out I wasn't the first person to have this idea. I wasn't as smart as I thought, but it hadn't been tested before. So, there was a lot of conversation about whether it was a good idea. And after a while, some time passed, some great debate, and in true Netflix style, we decided to A-B test the idea. So for those of you who haven't done A-B testing much, here's a quick primer. So we have our normal customer experience, we'll call it the control experience. First, we come up with a hypothesis about how we could improve the customer experience. So in this case, we, we think that allowing non-members to browse the content before signing up will improve the amount of sign-ups we get. And then, this is where we start to design and develop different variations to explore different variables to test against the control. So then, once the test launches, users randomly get assigned to the different experiences, either the control or any of the variations. Then we pick the winner, the one that got the most sign-ups, and then that becomes the new control experience. We roll that out to everyone, and then we start thinking about the next test, and the next, and the next, and it keeps going. So I've told you about how A-B testing works. So how does that work with our A-B test? So let's pretend... Ah, there he is. Let's pretend we are Jason. So he's one of the thousands of people that would be allocated to the, to the test. He's heard about Netflix, and he wants to find out more. So this was a, a good couple of years ago. He randomly gets assigned the control experience. So you'll see that there's, there's no navigation on the, on, at the top, and there's no rows of content. There's just a very clear call to action, and there's nowhere really to go other than sign up or leave. Then let's put ourselves in another person's shoes, Emma. She gets one of the many test experiences that we designed. So let's say variation one. So when she goes to Netflix, she sees that there's this navigation and there's all this wonderful content. And she can scroll down and she can scroll through rows and then she can go and check out different genres and just have a really good look around at all the different content we have to offer. And so obviously you can see she can just play around to her heart's content. And then when she clicks on a title, she can get more information, she can get the synopsis, she can get all the episodes that we have. Oh, sorry. So after that first test launch, with multiple variations, back in 2013, like I said, we, it was ready for us to just sit back and let the results come in to see which test cell would win. And what happened? The experience that had the most sign-ups was, get ready for it, the control experience. We were a bit disappointed, but we were okay with that. We knew we had so many more ideas around this testing, so we decided to test multiple times with all the different um, executions. So we did one test, and then another, and then another. And the last one was earlier this year, but each time it lost against control experience. 
so frustrating. And so, we, I, I think the reason I'm coming to share this with you is because it was a super interesting series of tests, because we all assumed it would be better for the user to see the content before signing up. And we were so surprised that it kept failing against the control experience. So today, I'm going to quickly share some of our top learnings, three of them, and how it could apply to you. So we learn it is so important to simplify to the appropriate choices. When we compare the two experiences, you see that Emma has way more choices and far less focus. She can go off down various paths and get lost amongst all the different content, whereas Jason has far more focus and less choice. Emma's not really given the appropriate information to make the appropriate choice. Jason's control experience, however, gives him the context he needs at the time to make a decision. And his choice is very simple with very little risk. We think that the low barrier to entry, which is the free month, and all you have to do is give us your payment details and you won't get charged, outweighs the need to see all the content before signing up. The next thing I want to talk to you about is this notion of not confusing the meal with the menu. That might seem a little strange to you right now. Um, so what we, we took for granted when we were testing all these things, that we thought we were being transparent by showing all the TV shows and movies. But really, we were hiding some of the best bits, the secret source of the product. So let me put it another way. Here's a menu from Foreign Cinema, one of my favorite restaurants in the city. If you haven't gone there, you need to go there. So the food looks good here, right? But it's hardly the same as the experience of foreign cinema. I mean, the food is obviously delicious, but then you've got the mood lighting, you've got the, the old films being projected. It's just a really cool experience. I think we can safely say that showing and telling is not the same as experiencing. So in Netflix's case, the menu would be showing the content as we did in our tests, and the meal is the experience of the product. The users won't be able to, weren't able to experience watching the content. You know, the way that when you watch Netflix, it just works. You just tap the, the content and it plays. And then the fact that you can start a show on your phone on the way to work and then do your day and then later on in the evening pick it up exactly where you left off, in your living room, on your TV. And they weren't able to experience the personalization the way... So if you look at this, this is um, a couple of screenshots I took last night of my profile versus my husband's profile. You see we're very different. So you see Robert loves stand-up comedy and comedy in general. And then I'm much more into my drama and my chick flicks. And then at closer look, you see that the content, the rows are different, and even the content within the rows is very different. See, Robert apparently is into raunchy TV shows. I'm sure he's very glad that I'm, I uh, am showing that here. Um, so in our test, the users weren't able to experience that personalized content because we didn't know much about them, so we had to show everybody the same content. The way the free trial works means that we can ask for a very low level of commitment from the user, which is, again, the payment, payment details, and then we give them a free, free month. In exchange for that, we allow them to take full advantage of the product. They get to watch the titles, and we get to know them, and then we can start showing them things that they're going to really love. And by the end of the month, they're likely to be more excited at the content and the product and then be more likely to be comfortable with paying for the experience. The last thing I want to cover is that the user doesn't always know what they need. I'm sure you, some of you know this classic Henry Ford quote. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. The same applies for Netflix. When we asked non-members if they could choose one thing to learn about before signing up, the results were pretty clear. You see, they asked, they, there were all these different things they wanted to know about, price, devices, it goes on, but 46% wanted to know all about the movies and TV shows. So from our testing, what we realize now 
is that the user might think they need to see the content before understanding if Netflix is right for them. But really, they need the experience of Netflix to see if Netflix is right for them. So they were three of the things we learned. And although we didn't beat our control experience in any of the tests, we did apply our learnings to future tests and learn every time to where we are now, which you can see here. So we've continued with the idea of simplifying to the appropriate choices, because there's always a clear path. If you have enough context and you hit the page, it's very clear what you need to do. Just hit that button and go. And then for people that do need more context, there's these buckets below. And these highlight the clear, the biggest barriers for people. And we've expanded on that functionality of these buckets from our learnings uh, with our newer markets. So we just launched in Japan about a month ago, and then Germany and France last year. And so where we're less known, or maybe the culture is different, more context is sometimes needed. So now you can tap on any of the buckets, and then there's that expanded information. And we're not confusing the meal with the menu. We don't allow for the user to get lost in the product without actually having the full Netflix experience, the meal, via the free trial. And we do still bear in mind that the user doesn't always know what they need. They think they want to know all the TV shows and movies, but we've learned that getting them to move forward into the free trial is best for them and for us. But we do now have an overview of our content. You can't really see it on the screen, but it's, it's faded back. It gives a real overview that signals the quality and the breadth of the catalog without the users getting bogged down and going navigating through a ton of pages. So of course, we won't stop there. We'll continue to design tests, and we'll learn each time we, each time we do the testing. A-B testing is such a powerful tool for designers. And I feel really lucky that I can test my ideas and then learn whether I'm right or wrong each test. To close, I do want you to take a moment and think about what assumptions you might have made about your product and, and maybe that you could look at from a different angle. It's like Isaac Asimov says, your assumptions are your windows on the world. Scrub them off every once in a while or the light won't come in. Challenge your assumptions and open your mind. You might just be surprised. We were. The test may have failed five times, but we got smarter five times. Thank you.